Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part two of lesson 2.1. We've got three objectives. We are going to find x-intercepts of quadratic functions. We're going to write out the standard form of a quadratic function given the vertex and another point on the graph. And then we're also going to find maximum or minimum values of a quadratic function. So we've already done quite a bit with finding x-intercepts or finding zeros of a function this year. Remember, in order to find x-intercepts, we just take this f of x stuff on the left-hand side, replace it with a zero, and then we solve. Since these things are quadratic, a couple of options. We can either try to factor them out, or we can run our quadratic formula. So if we're taking a look at this example, f of x equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. Very first thing I'm going to do is replace the left-hand side with a zero. So 0 equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. Um, now what I'm going to do is, I like my a value out in front here to be 1. So I'm actually going to factor a negative 1 out of this entire function. So I'm going to get x squared minus 6x plus 8 inside of the parentheses. And then what I'm going to do is try to unfoil or factor this thing out. So we've got negative 1 times two sets of parentheses now. In order to get our x squared, we're going to need a couple of x's at the beginning of our parentheses. We need to multiply to a positive 8 and add up to a negative 6. Well, since the thing on the end is positive and the middle is negative, both of these values inside of our parentheses have to be negative. And I'm thinking 2 and 4. So we got negative 1, x minus 2, and x minus 4. So now what we're going to do is take each one of our factors and set it equal to 0, since we've still got this 0 hanging out on the left-hand side. If we grab that first factor, okay, technically it's the negative 1, so take negative 1 equals 0. That doesn't make any sense, so I'm just going to completely ignore that. I'm going to grab the x minus 2, set that equal to 0, and also grab the x minus 4, set that one equal to 0. In both of those cases, we're just going to add that number over to the other side. So add 2 to both sides on this left equation, add 4 to both sides on this right-hand equation, and we get x equals 2 and x equals 4. There are going to be three more examples that I run through on this page. Feel free to pause the video at any time and go through these on your own. So taking a look at this one, f of x equals 2x squared minus 10x plus 12. So again, replace left-hand side with a 0. So 0 equals 2x squared minus 10x plus 12. Just like the last one, I'm going to factor out this a value. So we end up with just an a value of 1 inside here. So x squared minus 5x plus 6. And I'm going to try to factor this stuff out in parentheses. So we need an x and another x. We need to multiply to 6 and add up to negative 5. So I'm thinking negative 2 and negative 3. And I'll grab each factor and set it equal to 0. So 2 equals 0, but again, that doesn't make sense. x minus 2 equals 0, so we get x equals 2. And x minus 3 equals 0, so we get x equals 0. 3. On this next one, again, set it equal to 0. Now, I'm not going to unfoil this one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start moving numbers around. So I'm going to add this 10 over to the left-hand side. So we get 10 equals 2x squared. Divide both sides by 2. So we get 5 equals x squared. And I'm going to square root both sides. Square root the right, square root the left. Remember, when we square root this 5, we have to remember to put the plus or minus in front of there. So solving this one, we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Now this last one might be a little bit trickier. Here we've got a quadratic in standard form, but we're going to treat it exactly the same. 0 equals 2 times x plus 4 squared minus 10. Now, in order to simplify this one down and eventually solve it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square out this x plus 4. So x plus 4 squared is really like x plus 4 times another x plus 4. So we have to remember to FOIL that out. So we've got 2 times. FOILing this out, we're going to get x squared plus 8x plus 16. And then we still got the minus 10 hanging out on the end. Distribute the 2 all the way through these parentheses. So 2x squared plus 16x plus 32 minus 10. Um, combine like terms on the end. So 2x squared plus 16x plus 22. And just like I've been doing, I'm going to factor this out so I have an a value of 2. So 2 times x squared plus 
8x plus 11. And now, if we were to try to factor this out, we would need something that would multiply to 11 and add up to 8. And I honestly can't think of anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this stuff inside of the parentheses and run the quadratic formula. Remember, that's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, a is the number in front of our x squared. B is the number in front of our x, and C is the plane constant on the end. So we've got negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times our A value. And now what I'm going to do is work on simplifying this down. So underneath the radical, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 and negative 4 times 11 is negative 44. So we've got negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 44 all over 2. Underneath the radical again, 64 minus 44, we get negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 20 all over 2. We can break down the square root of 20 into 2 root 5 all over 2. And then we can simplify this down. If we take negative 8 divided by 2, we get negative 4. And we can kind of cancel out these 2's in front here. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 5. Remember, this is x equals. Uh, there are technically two answers here. We've got negative 4 plus the square root of 5 and negative 4 minus the square root of 5. All right, so next thing we're doing is we're looking at writing out the standard form of a quadratic equation based on a given vertex and a point that the graph passes through. So remember, standard form of a quadratic, it says f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And we almost have enough information to write this whole thing out. We just don't know what our a value is. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this h and k value. Remember, this thing is h right here. This thing on the end is k. We're going to plug those into our equation. Well, for this ordered pair, we're also given an x and a y value. So we're going to substitute that stuff into the equation as well. And then the only thing we don't have is that a value. So we'll go through and solve for that. So we said this y value, or this f of x value, is going to be 0 equals a, because we don't know what a is yet, uh, times 0 minus our h value is 1 squared. And then we need our k value of 2 on the end. So let's go ahead and simplify this down. Inside of those parentheses, 0 minus 1 is just negative 1. We've got to square that and then add 2. Uh, negative 1 squared is just 1. So really, this is saying 0 equals, well, a times 1 is just a plus 2. Subtract the 2 over to the other side, and we get an a value of negative 2. So now what I'm going to do is plug in the h and k value and this a value that we just found to write out the entire function. So f of x equals our a value of negative 2 times x minus our h value of 1 squared plus 2. So this equation is going to have that vertex of 1, 2, and it's also going to go through that point 0, 0. All right, here we go. Another example doing the exact same thing. We're given a vertex. We're given a point. We're just going to plug all of that stuff into our standard form of a quadratic, find our a value, and then rewrite it. So here's h, here's k, there's x, and there's y. So we go. 5 equals a times our x value minus our h value squared plus our k value. And now we're going to simplify this down. Double negative on the inside turns into addition. 5 equals a times 3 squared plus 6. Well, 3 squared is 9. So 5 equals 9a plus 6. Uh, subtract the 6 over to the left-hand side. So we get negative 1 equals 9a, divide both sides by 9, and we get an a value of negative 1 ninth. So then we write out the entire function. f of x equals negative 1 ninth times x. Instead of minus negative 2, I'm just going to make it plus 2 right away, squared plus 6. So there's our function. All right, last thing we're going to be doing are a couple of application problems where we have to find a maximum or a minimum value based on a quadratic function. Well, remember, those maximum or minimum values happen at the vertex of our graph. And in our last video, 
if we had a quadratic equation that was not in standard form, we had to do that completing the square thing in order to find the vertex. Well, I'm not going to make you complete the square with these complicated functions that we're going to be dealing with. So I've got a little bit of a shortcut on the screen right now. In order to find the vertex of our parabola, one thing we could do is for this x value, we could just grab negative b over 2a. Okay, so that'll give us the x value for our vertex. And then to find the y value, what we would do is we would just take this negative b over 2a and plug it into our function. So it's a handy little shortcut so we don't have to go through completing the square every time. All right, so first example. We're working together with a local soft drink manufacturer. They've got this quadratic equation to represent their production costs. So we've got c equals 70,000 minus 120x plus 0.075x squared. c is going to represent the cost in dollars and x is going to represent the number of units produced. So what we want to do is we want to figure out how many units we have to produce to yield a minimum cost, and then we have to figure out what that cost is. Okay, Since the first thing we're finding are the number of units, that'd be the x value, we're going to use that shortcut formula that we just wrote down on the last page to help us find the x value for the vertex. So remember the, the x value, we go negative b over 2a. And in a quadratic equation, it goes ax squared plus bx plus c. So the first b value we want is the number in front of the x. Right now it's negative 120, but remember we have to make it its opposite. So it's going to be positive 120 over 2 times the a value, which we're going to find in front of that x squared. So it's 0 0.075. If we punch the bottom into a calculator, we get 120 over 0.15. And then if we carry out that division, we get an x value of 800. Okay, So that's how many units we need to produce in order to get a minimum cost. Now, in order to figure out what that cost is actually going to be, we need to take this x value and plug it back into our equation. So c equals 70,000 minus 120 times 800 plus 0 0.075 times 800 squared. And honestly, I would just take this whole right hand side and punch it into the calculator. And we should get a cost of $22,000. Here we go. Last example. A baseball is going to be hit at a point three feet above the ground at a velocity of 100 feet per second. And the exit angle is going to be a 45 degree angle with respect to the ground. The path of the baseball is given to us by this quadratic function f of x equals negative 0.0032 x squared plus x plus 3. f of x is going to represent the vertical height of the baseball in feet, and x is going to represent the horizontal distance away from home plate. So we want to find the maximum height of the baseball. So that's going to be like the y value of our vertex, but in order to find the y value, we first need to find the x value. So remember, we go negative b over 2a, well, in this case, our b value is 1. So negative 1 over 2 times negative 0 0.0032. And then we're going to start simplifying this down. So the bottom, if we double that negative 0 0.0032, we get negative 0 0.0064. And then punching this into the calculator, we get 156.25. Now that's the distance away from home plate. That's the x value. We want the y value to figure out the actual vertical height. So we're going to take this x value and plug it back into our equation. So negative 0 0.0032 times 156.25 squared plus 156.25 plus three, and again, punch this stuff into the calculator and let that thing do all the work for you. And when we do that, we should get a maximum height of 81.125 feet. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you fill out the Google form linked in the description down below.